All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music and real controversy at halftime and doing it and for a few real people out there just like you, just like me, Journey, singing at halftime. Holy crap, Batman, was it good? Did you like it? I thought it was pretty good, but there are a couple of things we have to deal with here. Um, first, Grand and uh, their album Second to None, right? Again, for fans of the kind of music that Journey makes. Okay, for those of you not interested in new music, here's what they used to do at the Christian bookstore, right? You know, if you like Brian Adams, you might like Stephen Curtis Chapman. <laughs> so anyway, if you like Journey and Foreigner and Toto and Styx, you might like Grand, second to none, all right? So there you go. It's, um, I'm going back to, my days when I first became a Christian and uh, people are telling me, you know, if you like this band over here, you may like this artist over here. So, you know, the golden years of uh, Christian contemporary music. Now, um, getting back to the controversy out on the field or actually in the stadium during the game, actually at halftime. So the game had uh, taken a break because that's what they do. That's why they call it halftime. So here's the story. Legendary Rockers Journey, who were formed in the San Francisco Bay Area more than 50 years ago, performed their smash hit. <laughs> their smash hit. It's a smash hit. Mm -hmm. it, most overplayed song in the history of music. Um, and they did this song at halftime during the game, which was between the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers, but they changed the lyrics from just a city boy born and raised in South Detroit to born and raised in San Francisco. Now, you old time Journey fans know that Steve Perry used to do that um, when they went to Houston, the, the, the famous concert, the Houston were Perry. But that is like one of the greatest concerts in the history of concerts, by the way. And you Steve Perry fans, you'll be Happy to just reminisce with me briefly. Um, live in Houston, I saw Journey the same year at the Cape Cod Coliseum. <laughs> if I had only known what I was, I mean, I enjoyed it, but man, who would know how many years later? And I'm still here. And so is Journey. So both of those things are kind of miraculous. Anyway, um, so they changed up the lyrics. Now, the crowd <laughs> who was you know, in San Francisco, continued to sing the original lyrics, singing South Detroit, which is a fictitious place, doesn't exist, but it's close to Detroit, you would think. And so the boys decided because they were in San Francisco that they would uh, pay homage to the city by the bay. Now, did they do lights, by the way? I was told they didn't do lights, which... I don't know that. Why didn't they do lights? Maybe they did. I, and I just didn't see the entire set list. I'm wondering if this article. Yeah, this article they did separate ways. Be good to yourself any way you want it. And don't They didn't do lights. <laughs> why did you guys do lights? Oh, my gosh. All right. Um, anyway, uh, I'm just really shocked at that. So the people in the stadium continue to sing. Uh, born and raised in South Detroit. So nobody heard the lyric change. Now, the other small controversy here is a couple of people sent me videos of this, and then I watched a couple more online. And I noticed that the vocals were not syncing with the video, or the video was not syncing with the vocals. By the way, they put the band like in the stadium with everybody, and they had like this square box with a few lights flashing. And I see Dean Castronova back there just doing his thing. And it, it just looked very cage-like, like band in a cage. I don't know. It was okay. You know, Todd Jensen's just kind of like not able to move anywhere. So <laughs> they're not a very, you know, athletic band. Although for a while, Arnell used to run around. And I'm thinking he probably felt somewhat confined by that space. So again, getting back to the video, syncing with the audio, um, there seemed to be some issues there. 
based on what I watched. Now, again, that will raise all of the questions that I've addressed here before about lip syncing, about vocal tracks. Now, we know that Arnell changed up the lyrics, so most people would just assume, well, he's got to be singing it live, right? He changed up the lyrics. And then at the end of the song, the kind of the outro to the ending, um, Arnell throws some off-speed stuff. In other words, um, all of these high notes leading to the sort of climactic uh, cold ending of the live version, uh, Arnell went down instead of up. And it, it sounded kind of cool because, again, I've heard this song, uh, let me see, 700 million 400,396 times. So on this version, at least I heard something that was slightly different toward the end, even though I didn't hear him uh, sing San Francisco because the, the crowd drowned him out, which is weird because they're in San Francisco. So you get the outro, which is different. You get the changed up lyrics. So automatically people would assume again, what they say when you assume, right, that he is singing the song live. And there is a very high likelihood he's singing the song live. However, however, little asterisk, you know, I've done videos about this. So the way AI works today is it can process a singer at the point of when they're singing the song. And with like, a millisecond, a split second, that sound can be adjusted at the board. So he sings it into the microphone. It comes out sounding whatever way they want it to sound. Again, I am not saying this is happening. I have no confirmation of this happening, but it does raise questions, uh, especially when there seemed to be a little delay between the audio and the video. Now, again, nobody's really going to notice all that much. Um, I'm sure people were at a tailgate for three hours. Um, Journey was the halftime entertainment. They were in San Francisco. By the way, it was a great idea to have Journey play this. And I know Neil Sean in the past has complained about gigs like this that the band could have booked. And uh, Jonathan Cain said he didn't want to do it. It appears now that the boys are on the same page. This is a great opportunity for um, more downloads, more ticket sales for the upcoming tour that they're about to go on. This is just really smart marketing. And apparently the two wives are working together now. That's what I've heard, which is uh, very interesting. It's good news for people who want to see this band without the drama and the controversy. Although, Again, folks, I'm, uh, I'm not going to lie. The drama does help this channel. So <laughs> it's like everything else. People care more about drama. You know, I can tell you about Grand all day long. People, ah, who cares, Dave? That's it. Who cares? I don't care. Stop. Stop talking about that. Tell me what else is controversial about this. Well, I think that's it. I mean, the fact that they tried to sing San Francisco and... <laughs> they were drowned out by people singing South Detroit in San Francisco, which is, again, I think just um, people who are used to singing the song that way and didn't think, oh, no, I don't want to sing those lyrics because I'm cheering on the other team. By the way, <laughs> apparently Detroit had this huge lead and they lost it and San Francisco won the game. In case you were wondering what happened. Um People like went to bed or just decided to turn it off. And then turns out um, San Francisco is going to the Super Bowl. So must be because of Journey, right? Journey is like the good luck charm. And, um, you know, this is good for everybody. Now, it's kind of sad, especially with the 49ers going to the Super Bowl, that you don't have a Bay Area band representing... The soup. I mean, but then again, that would be playing favorites, right? Um, so I guess they have to have the entertainment, quote unquote, that they've already announced for the Super Bowl. And rock and roll is not really on the menu. So again, folks, 
controversy surrounding the journey performance. Um, I'm sure people are going to have strong opinions about this or they're not going to care. It's just, <laughs> it, it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other, either who cares or yeah, you know, they were definitely singing and it was awesome. And I had a great time and I drank a 12 pack by myself. You know, that's pretty much what people are going to do. Anyway, here's grand and second to none. And their album is definitely great. I don't know if it's second to none, but it is their second album, uh, courtesy of our friends over at Frontiers Music. Um, and I should be purchasing more music as the year goes on. Um, thank you again for supporting, all right, supporting the channel. Um, it's been a rough 11, 12 months. It's like a year since this started happening where the revenue just went like that. Now, I had a couple of videos do really well recently, but it didn't offset that much. It's strange. I'm still waiting. They always say, wait a couple of days to see if your numbers improve. And they've improved, but they did not improve as much as they used to improve. I mean, you get a video has 60,000 views. By the way, I will be talking about David Lee Roth again in a video because he said something rather controversial at the beginning of his rant about Wolfgang Van Halen, and it needs to be addressed, and I will address it. So look forward to that. In the meantime, God bless everyone. Uh, please pray for peace in the Middle East and around the world. Pray for our troops who are in harm's way because they're always in harm's way, and there are a lot of bad things that we are involved in, and I wish we weren't, but uh, apparently some people think that we should be. So uh, <laughs> that's all I could say about that. And I will see you soon.